welcome guys just going to wait a short while for people to join can you can you just give me a thumbs up to uh if my microphone is okay thank you welcome guys welcome i've just invited you to speak uh david there you go all good guys if you would like to speak uh put your hand up and uh and i'll add you just one minute and i'll be right back no problem welcome pepe hope you're good brother looks like we've got baguette requesting as well how you doing for breeze hello how's things man it's lovely i have uh and uh space coming in one hour and a half with oh, have you? proof of french which is a uh, uh really 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 active community so yeah awesome i'm up happy to, to be there to bring the raptorium magic there <laughs> fantastic just going to give it uh, another couple of minutes and we'll just get started. It looks like the listeners are piling in now. For those of you who are here already, um, please blast out the space and let's see if we can't get a few more people in. And we should be kicking off shortly. It looks like 88 other listeners. 98 now. I think we're over 100. So it's uh, stacking Ooh. up already. There we go. Over 100 still going up yeah Good it's awesome stuff. beautiful um so what i'll do i'll just get started with a bit of an introduction and then uh and then we'll get started with the main space while everyone's still joining hello everyone and a warm welcome to today's raptorium twitter spaces event uh well we where we dive into the exciting realm of UTXO based decentralized finance, also known as UTXO DeFi. I am Binary, also known as Paul Mills, uh, your host for this journey into the intricacies and the innovations of UTXO models in the blockchain space, with the hope that we can learn a lot from this with the upcoming assets release for Raptorium and also other UTXO chains for that matter. Today, we're here to unravel the mysteries and the potential of UTXO-based DeFi systems. The unique unspent transaction output model brings new dimensions to decentralized finance, promising enhanced security, scalability, and privacy. Uh, we've got a stellar lineup of experts ready to share their insights, experiences, and visions for the future of UTXO DeFi. One thing to note is that this isn't just a, a discussion, it's an interactive experience. So we encourage all of you to participate and share your thoughts and ask questions. Uh, to join the conversation, simply raise your hand and we'll bring you up to the virtual stage. Our agenda today includes discussions on successful UTXO DeFi projects, uh, the role of smart contracts within UTXO DeFi, uh, challenges faced by developers, and much more. Whether you're a seasoned blockchain enthusiast or just starting to explore the world of decentralized finance, hopefully there's something here for everyone. Throughout this Spaces session, uh, we aim to foster connections and knowledge sharing. So feel free to connect with fellow participants and exchange ideas and make valuable connections within the UTXO DeFi community. If you do find today's discussions interesting, please share your insights on Twitter, also known as X, uh, using the hashtag UTXO DeFi spaces. Then we can amplify the conversation beyond these virtual walls. And now without further ado, oh, we, we, we're over 200 now. Yeah, without further ado, let's kick off this UTXO DeFi exploration. And I'll pass the mic to our first speaker. Remember, this is your space too. Uh, so let's make it vibrant and, and in, engage in discussion. Enjoy the session, guys. Uh, so my first question literally opens the whole space up. Uh, and it's surprising, really, that a lot of people don't know uh, what it is. But uh, I'll pass it to David. Um, David, what is UTXO-based DeFi? Well, um, UTXO-based DeFi was kind of a thing a long, long time ago. It started with 
uh, Eric Forhears running a platform called Satoshi Dice, where you can essentially interact with different services strictly on chain. With Satoshi Dice, you could send in a Bitcoin transaction and uh, depending on the address you sent it to, you would get back, you'd win either on odds or on evens in the block hash for the transaction as it was included, meaning very simple, very straightforward, no faffing about, everything 100% transparent. And um, a lot of people have been talking about how we can make something like that happen again nowadays in a slightly more modern way. Uh, I'm consulting on one project for it. Several others are on the way as well. Different forms of blockchain-related games, market-related games, operating in the same completely permissionless manner, fully on-chain, no need to actually interface with a website or anything remotely like that. So, yeah. Let's see what the rest of the space have to say about it. Guys, if you want to speak, raise your hand. Uh, so I think what um, a lot of people would like to understand is what are the the advantages of UTXO-based DeFi compared to account-based systems such as EVM? Um, we, we've got to be very careful that we don't start losing the, the crowd by getting too technical on this. But basically... That it uses simpler systems, more direct systems, where we get uh, people, users in who are okay with simple concepts and can track things through a block explorer rather than having to trust an automated market maker or an automated pool or anything like that on many of the EVM chains. Uh, for example, a service like Free Bitcoin. They're one of the oldest Bitcoin faucets. They've been around since, if I remember correctly, 2012, 2011 or 2012. Uh, they've been facilitating different kinds of block uh, BTC games, gambling on high lows, giving you free rolls every hour, all kinds of things. But all of this is mathematically verifiable. There is code. You can verify what's going on. You can't really verify what's going on when you send off a transaction into Uniswap at the moment. Okay. Are there any uh, successful um, UTXO DeFi projects today? And what are those projects, if you know of any? Um, I mean, um, the longest running, most successful would have to be Free Bitcoin, like I just mentioned. Satoshi Dice was... The first Bitcoin business to be sold for a very large amount of money. Uh, Eric Vorhees made out like a bandit on that. If <laughs> if nobody's familiar with who that is, that is the gentleman who currently runs Shapeshift. And uh, it was disruptive. It led to all kinds of discussions. First round of what you could call spam discussions about the Bitcoin blockchain a long time before the block size wars because of the sheer number of transactions we were seeing congestion back then. But part of the congestion we were seeing back then was caused by Bitcoin transactions older than 120 confirmations not requiring any transaction fees on the network at that point in time, which was... Both a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. It was a good thing to get more people involved and get them using Bitcoin. But it was also a system that encouraged semi-spammy behavior. Yeah, I mean, those are, those are separate projects. Are there notable chains that we should be focusing on? Um, today, Ergo have all kinds of really cool things going on in their ecosystem. Ooh, who else? Um, a lot, really. Xano have things coming out with Zarkanum. Firo have a uh, really enhanced pro overseas <laughs> protocol coming out in seven days, I believe. Seven or eight days. And 
that privacy protocol is going to facilitate an awful lot of people participating with really great privacy. They've got an Elysium uh, a colored coins based token layer coming at the same time, which is also affected by that privacy protocol. So effectively, they're going to become a giant mix net. Hmm. Okay. I think Twitter has been taking funny pills. What's going on? We seem to be down to 12 people now. Guys, share the link. If you're listening, share the link. Maybe if we bump a few more listeners, it will go back to where it should be. Yeah, that's strange. Okay. Uh, well, it's being recorded anyway, so uh, we'll just uh, we'll just carry on. Yeah, it looks like they're coming back in, mate. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's working. Fabrice, can you hear me? Perfectly, bro. Perfectly, fantastic. Um, what are you looking forward to building on Raptorium, Fabrice, when uh, Assets is released? Well, I, I've been talking a lot about, and I've dived a lot about, uh, real um, opportunity that bring uh, token or NFTs. That's something I've been dabbing for months right now. I worked on stuff around this subject and there is an awful amount of use that we can bring but making it so easy for anyone uh, having a business to use them that it's it's where i'm hyped to go for you know forward that we it's i mean it's already used in uh, in a lot of industry um, yeah, yeah. actually but mainly uh, on permissioned uh, or private uh, blockchain, as you could say in intranet <laughs> nearby, nearly. But yeah, it's, yeah. It's, <clears throat> it's a blockchain-based system, but it's used as an intranet. But I mean, <clears throat> you can see, uh, I've been posting on, actually on my personal LinkedIn, a lot of stuff around this industry. You can see um, uh, food, processing industry using it in Spain I, I was amazed I, I was buying a pack, a pack of eggs in the in the supermarket and I just saw a QR, a QR code QR code and 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 then I I see end of the the packet I see uh, like we are using blockchain technology so I just scanned it you know yeah me. and yeah uh, they're using it the right way. I mean, you have all the the details of where the eggs is made, or what what was the number of uh, uh, the chicken and uh, the. How you say that in English? What the? I don't know the chicken. Yeah, the chicken. <laughs> you got the word right. Yeah. Uh oh, um, have we lost Fabrice, have we lost... or have we lost me? No, we we've got you. It's just uh, Twitter being Twitter, isn't it? Yeah, right? it, it yeah. Looks like it. Yeah. Ah, you're back again. Welcome back. Yeah, he's back. Yeah, yeah so I, I was saying, yeah, basically they're using it the right way. Um, I mean, this is the right way to use this technology, and there is a lot of of things that are made and can be made using this type of technology, making it easy to access. And not needing to go through a private company that will charge hundreds of thousands of of euro or dollars, depending on the, where you live, uh, to access this technology, it's 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 hyping me, you know. So, what would you say that the benefits are for them to use uh, that that blockchain technology in the traceability of their pro produce uh, at the supermarket, as opposed to just standards? computer software based systems but i mean it's it's the thing is it's totally in transparent it's seamless it's it's easy to understand it's it's uh it's it's immutable it's not something that can be changed i mean when you have food problem happening because it happens at times you can see all the chain on one second like it's not an old system that which it's searching through a lot of database and indexes and stuff like that. It's yeah. just go through, you know, in one second, two seconds, you know where it came from. 
where it has been processed, who who delivered the the, the merchandise. So it's in a, in a very utilitarian way. It's powerful. Then you can go the other way. You can go the the way of uh, exclusivity. You know, some people may want to build up their brands um, while using the same type of way, meaning that you you have a jewelry. You want to you are an, uh, you, you you are like an artisan. Is it something you say in English? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> say the word again. Artisan. Artisan. Um, yeah. 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 You are an artisan, you have a bit jewelry, and you want to build up your brand. It, that's something that assets can do too. You know, it's pretty easy to shoot out um, if you don't have to learn technology to use it. Uh, it's pretty easy to shoot it down and, uh, and build the brand saying, yeah, the stone came from there. Um, the, take a video and show how the, the artisan made the jewelry itself uh explain build the brand around it you know and it's something that it's it's bringing value to the person and to the to the to those kind of works too yeah absolutely um one of the biggest questions that i really want to to hear from you uh fabrice is are we going to get a baguette token on the raptorium oh, chain <laughs> soon <laughs> I, I guess as soon as it roll out i don't think Wondering, so I could call it baguette snoring or baguette alone, you know? Well, yeah, it could be either. It could be either. <laughs> it, it, could, it could point to a, just a, 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 an audio file of me snoring and with different variation, you know, depending on the, on the, on the moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's, it's totally a technology which is uh getting out right now but most of the time what happens is used on on uh permissioned or what you call private blockchain and uh and this is not something that your um average i would say uh, it's not it's not in a bad way but i, I should say little small or middle business can pay and uh, giving them the the possibility to to do it easily without uh without it, it costing hundreds of thousands. It's something that it's it's gonna blow, bro. Totally. Awesome. Next question I've got here um, is: How does uh, UTXO DeFi enhance security and privacy in comparison to what Ethereum-based chains currently offer? Uh, I'll pass Can that I to take? Me. No, I can take it too. Take oh, it? oh, yeah, totally. First things, DeFi is based on smart contracts. Blockchain, DeFi is based on smart contracts. Do you want to? Do you want us to bring out how many breached, hack, <laughs> or bad smart contracts are out there? Even if you go to any uh, audit, auditing firm that are looking at a lot of smart contracts, you can even see that even like a well-known uh, DAP at some point got fucking just wrecked, you know? Yeah, yeah. It happens uh, not so long ago to Kyber Network, so Kyber Swap. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 Security Bridge. Uh, and uh, it's it's happening a lot. and. It has to go to all the version of uh, Solidity which are rolling out. Then also all the, the stable version <laughs> that are rolling out. And uh, it's, it's um, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's basically a, a, an alpha language in, in, in technology, you know? It's, it's known by very few people. It, it's well known by even fewer people. So, I mean, you just have, a small pool of developers and even a smaller of good developers. And then what happens is then even the person that know the code, Solidity code, can just make a smart contract that get hacked and that's it. Well, it's not just even that, is it? It's, it can matter a lot depending on which version of Solidity uh, yeah. you're actually using. I mean, some of the older versions of Solidity are more safer to use than 
than than even some of the newer versions, uh, as we've seen. Yeah, it's 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 all around. It's all around this aspect that it it makes sense that if you can do it without contract at protocol layer level, it's it, it, just it beats crazy. me how they put so so much value into the control of a of a an exploitable smart contract on EVM based chains, and then wonder why. Uh, it's all disappeared. You know what I mean? It's it happens all the time, but yet you still see millions and millions of dollars being lost we, on a daily basis. We should have a couple of people in here who can actually speak about this. I'm not quite sure if I see them in the list, but if Clianti from Lossless, if you're in the space, uh, please request speaker and tell us a little bit about the problems with different versions of solidity and how you guys monitor that with lossless and help people counteract that so we can get a little bit of both sides of the argument going well guys if you want to if you want to chip in and speak and talk about your project or uh, or anything like that uh, we'll be more than pleased to have you up on up on the virtual stage but basically that's one of the main two of the main issue we've been talking about and it's still happening every day. Yep. Yeah, it is. I, I shared some times ago all the issues. Uh, I, I think it's in our Telegram group that could be fine around it, you know, depending on the version, depending if it's a layer two, depending on a lot of stuff. So it's, 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 it's crazy to see all that money pop out in there. But that's because most of the time that's the only stuff they know, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, David, can you give us a bit of an insight on uh, the the differences in security between uh, UTXO chains and Ethereum-based chains? Well, I mean, uh, on the chain level themselves, in most cases there is no difference. At least, if we're talking proof of work chains, if we are talking proof of stake chains. Uh, security is in some ways improved, in other ways worsened. So it's it's a little bit of a, a tricky question. But I mean, the majority of EVM-based chains are, if they're doing proof of work, they are doing straight up proof of work, which is prone to issues like 51% attacks and all that. We've seen that happen as lately as, I believe it was 2021, we had a massive 51% attack on ETC. That was one of the biggest in the space in a long time, where they got 51% attacked, and a lot of the exchanges now still require well in excess of a 1,000 confirmations for coins to be deposited. They are now running with a full ecosystem uh, similar to what is running on ethereum mostly they're focused around herboswap hebe uh, a group of young people from shandong in china uh, they're doing a good job at keeping etc alive and well um, and now because they have inherited as much of the proof of work hash power from ethereum as they have they are extremely secure but with utxo based chains you've got other options um, you've got dpow which is delegated proof of work which was first implemented by i believe flow and then komodo followed or it was a mix up of the people from those two teams i can't quite remember all the details of it but essentially what they do is they have uh, they send a transaction hash every so and so many blocks on their own chain. They send a transaction on LTC or BTC networks uh, that includes that transaction hash um, from their own chain. So you essentially have to alter both chains in order to attack anything on their network. 
The other option is also to use a secondary consensus mechanism uh, like Dash does. Dash uses their nodes to sign transactions into the chain, meaning once a transaction has been signed into the chain, it cannot any longer be removed, like with a 51% attack on the proof-of-work hash. This is considerably more secure than uh, what you'd consider standard proof-of-work mining or standard even proof-of-stake mining on any chains, really. You could combine the secondary, uh, the distributed proof of work or delegated proof of work, whichever one of the two options you're using. They're, they're just minor code differences. But essentially, you have um, all of, you, you've added a second layer, sorry. Normally, if you've only got one consensus protecting your chain, it's going to be relatively weak and open to attack angles. But if you add multiple factors to that, for example, a secondary layer with nodes like RTM, Dash, Firo, that's one way of mitigating this. Or if you involve a second blockchain like Komodo and Flow do, then you've got options that are not impossible to attack, but incredibly difficult to attack. It's, it's kind of... Not not really horses for courses if trying to compare the two. You would have to have an incredible amount of capital to deploy to, for example, disrupt staking on the Ethereum network now. But you can definitely disrupt staking on it if you've got sufficient capital. It's just a question of where's the money. You would, you would need a ridiculous amount of money. Is there even enough money in the world to do that? Oh, there is. There is. Just think about how little a blip, how small a blip crypto actually is in comparison to the stock markets. Yeah, yeah. It does become a bit of a concern when we see people like BlackRock coming into the space, potentially via EFTs, things like that. But we'll have to see how it goes. Absolutely. Um, one of the things that I've been thinking about um, in terms of when the assets is released on on raptorium um is what sort of challenges are developers going to face building on raptorium or even utxo based chains as opposed to um you know ethereum based chains where there's a more established framework for developing applications uh, brand new ones since you won't be limited to the same range of languages, you won't be limited to the same implementation style, or in the case of other chains like Radiant or Qtum, who are also UTXO-based chains, none at all, as they've ported over the EVM uh, contract execution engines and are running yeah. with them. So it, it, it depends on the implementation and I mean, in some cases, potential hindrances may actually turn out to be strengths longer term, because as soon as Java libraries, Python libraries start becoming reasonably available, then it changes the game away from a few rather shoddily maintained Solidity libraries. How, how do you think the introduction of Java and Python libraries onto the smart contracting side of things uh, is going gonna, is gonna to improve things? It's going to mean that literally 10,000 times the amount of developers that are currently able to build smart contracts are going to be able to go out and do so, which really should lead to the development of things like software as a service using blockchain um, for software as a service. There are quite a few other potential things we can, you can do with uh, the whole blockchain economy. Um, it lends itself. I'm a consultant on another project uh, called Artera, which is going to be focusing. They're an EVM project, which is going to be focusing on distributed or decentralized SaaS 
software as a service, but even the stuff they've got queued up, lined up, is going to pale in comparison to what you can actually do. If you can just start building directly in Python and in Java, it's we're talking about changing the dynamic so wholly and fully that it becomes very difficult to see how it won't change the game completely. I'm, I'm loath to make any kind of predictions about how. I just know that the changes are going to be drastic, wild, and interesting. <laughs> oh, it looks like Rubens here. Oh, yeah, Confira. we've got yeah. another really pioneering innovator in the space. Uh, Ruben, if you would be so good as to request speaker so you can tell us a little bit about the upcoming changes on the Firo mainnet. It's really something uh, we'd like to hear about. It's cool stuff. Hi, hey, Ruben. Looks like you're a speaker now. Hey, hello. I, I'm in bed, so <laughs> I, <laughs> I just saw Big Piggy, like, you know, like, hey, check, check out this space. And I was just kind of busy body in what you guys were doing. So, yeah, I just thought I'll support a bit. This is what's <laughs> this is what's good about space is, you know, it's all terrain uh, connecting. You're, you can be in bed and still get away with it. So, uh, so Ruben, tell us, uh, tell us what you're working on. Uh, uh, not, not, the, not because I don't want to share, but just like my brain is fried <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> but check out Firo. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, I think it would be fair to say that you're one of the few that's really pushing innovation out there on the privacy side of things and on sort of getting DeFi and use cases for DeFi included into the whole TXO side chain industry. I mean, I, I, I do think we punch above our weight and like, you know, we've contributed a lot to Privacy protocol development, not the most profitable thing to do for sure, you know, um, especially since all our work is, you know, totally open source, MIT license, blah, blah, blah. But, um, you know, I do think that I do think there are things, the things that we are building are, are important. And, well, I don't know. I don't know what were your recent plans for Raptorium. Like, were you thinking of uh, integrating some kind of privacy. I think the last we spoke, we, uh, you had some ideas, we, right? We yeah. are looking at doing so once we finish developing uh, the feature list we have. We want to work through scaling first. Uh, once we're done with basically our scaling and our alternative contract implementation, then um, something like Lelanta Spark looks ideal for our purposes, really. Especially with the yeah, and you especially guys, with the way we have... want to cluster. Basically, we're going to take the standard master node and turn it into a smart contract execution engine, um, where you could potentially use well, you could use privacy protocols in in a myriad of ways on that for for running mix nets or dedicated mix nets for running bridges in and out of the network, permissionless bridges in and out of the network. You can do so many things with it. It's definitely having uh, like, you know, asset support, right? I mean, I think that's one of the key pillars of uh, Raptorium, right? We, if I'm not we, mistaken. We've, we've uh, got assets. We, we looked at releasing our assets to mainnet. Um, however, we decided that we need to build a better forking mechanism for it first uh, the chances of basically just doing a regular network upgrade without something similar to bip9 consensus uh, to to sort of soften the whole forking process would be somewhat irresponsible so we're building a basically a bip9 mechanism that also includes uh, the nodes that's well on its way once we have that we'll be able to deploy it without disrupting the main net in any major way and apart from that assets are actually ready i the one of the reasons why i brought it up was um because you know like i'm not sure how how closely you follow like but we do have spark assets so that actually means that you know once you spark assets was designed to, to help token ecosystems where you're using the lantern spark technology but all the assets the asset type is indistinguishable that means 
when you're transferring something, you know, you don't even know what uh, outside people don't even know what asset you're transferring. And that's really important, uh, like, you know, because you have all sorts of tokens, right? Some will be in very heavy use, some will have almost no use. Uh, but in terms of privacy, when you're using something like spot assets type of tech, it doesn't really matter because all assets look the same on the blockchain. And that'd be pretty cool if we can, you know, if you guys implement it, then you know, we'll be happy to help consult on that as well. Yeah, but that's, we may actually have some plans for trying to, if if it's out by the time we get to contracts, then your token layer is something we're looking to be able to bridge into permissionlessly with smart contracts. And so basically, so people can come in and benefit from that privacy and then bridge back out again at a later point. Some stuff, guys. Any specific industries or sectors where only UTXO DeFi would excel, do you think? And, and not the other way around. I'll pass that to Fabrice. On the UTXO DeFi, yeah, gambling. <laughs> gambling, totally. Gambling, totally. what is that? Yeah, yeah, all in gambling. It's, it's fairly easy. All is on chain, bro. It's all on chain. If it's all on chain, it's indisputable who we'll win and who we'll lose, you know? So like betting, betting, gambling, one against the other, you know? Get on the platform, you gamble about something with someone, and everything is transparent. So what are the advantages of doing that on UTXO as opposed to Ethereum-based chains? But if we're doing on the up return, uh, the same as we as the project which is consulting uh, David, uh, as I say, it's for all to see. There is no smart contract manipulation possible. There is no proxy smart contract, as you know. It's uh, I don't know if everyone is uh, really familiar with the VM chain with the proxy smart contract. Then you can go and and modify whatever you want because you're using a proxy smart contract. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and and if you are betting uh, against the house. And the house can do what they were the funk. Sorry for the bad words. What they were they want using the proxy smart contract, maybe modification if they would do it. You know. Yeah, yeah. And that's something we don't want to see. So that's that's why I, I I'm telling that when when you see when you talk about EVM chain, whatever it is, everyone say yeah, disintermediation. I mean. They take out intermediary and you just have to trust the code. But that's okay if the code is trustable. It's all uh, the, the matter of proxy smart contracts. The thing is, the, tr the code is not trustable anymore. <laughs> you know, it doesn't make sense uh, to trust something that can be modified. But I mean, it's one of the reasons why it's been as successful as it has. Go going back again to Satoshi Dice, it was incredibly successful. It was su successful enough to create major BTC congestion back in the day, which was wild. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm going full on it. You know, it's it's cr crazy. The, the the thing is, I know people and EVM technology is is made in a weird way. It's made in a way. It's like everything when you try to build something. Sometimes you think it's it has a good prospect and good consequences over the chain and the use. But when they bring out those proxy smart contract and metamorphic smart contract and fuck like that, that is just a fuckery on the chain. And that's something you cannot just manage when you are a newbie or when you are a beginner. And even when you just just don't know how to read Solidity also. That's nothing that that which you want. you want to be on blockchain. You want to be when you think about blockchain, you think transparency, yeah. And it's not something that you're gonna see uh, that you're going to see into into those uh, DeFi protocol. There's any uh, hindrances in UTXO scalability uh, as opposed to um, EVM chains, or do you think uh, it depends on how you implement the UTXO? Well, obviously, um, what we've been doing at uh, Raptorium is uh, is a new architecture, a new way of thinking blockchain structures. And basically, 
I, I don't have any, I don't focus in transaction per seven, you know, it, I don't see any problem in how we're thinking to build a uh, Raptorium because it's, 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 it's made in a way that it's, it's not relevant to think about TPS transaction per second. Uh, the only uh, the only the only hindrance I can see is that for now people are just used to to go through the Solidity EVM chain because that's where um, that's where the DeFi is right now. But it's I don't see it as a big hindrance as a big hindrance because it's just to, uh, you got to try to see the change, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think uh, one of the main reasons why you don't see much more of a prevalence of UTXO DeFi these days is you, you can't have an easy transactable wallet in your browser um, like EVM chains have got with MetaMask and also Phantom with uh, Solana as well. You know what I mean? You, you just haven't got that. That, that is so, for yeah, sure one of the big hindrances in it. Um, but I think there are ways around that. Yeah, I mean, this is why this is why I built I built a team on uh, developing a wallet that would do this uh, for UTXO based chains. And not necessarily only RTM. We are open into other chains as well. But we have been developing Talon Wallet uh, now for the last year, probably more now where it literally will be the well we're aiming for it to be the metamask for utxo based chains um where you'll be able to transact your raptorian based assets and coins and, and also ergo and also main utxo chains such as btc and litecoin and many others like that so yeah that's something we're we're working on heavily one of the main um issues that we that we approached when we were developing this type of wallet is the way that UTXO chains work in terms of uh, the change addresses and things like that when it, when uh, a transaction completes. So we've uh, implemented a feature into the wallet which collates the balances at the end of a transaction and then puts it back into, into the main area mm -hmm. of the wallet. Uh, so then uh, So then all the balances are lined up also, uh, we've really simplified uh, the way uh, to, to do these transactions as well. Even more simple to use than, uh, than your standard MetaMask on EVM chains. We've also got a, an advanced tab as well for people who do like to monitor the change addresses without having, a, without having the collating into the one wallet. And uh, yeah, so it's something we're really excited about uh, to, to launch. Um, pretty soon with RTM assets and also uh, alongside um, a marketplace as well, uh, which is only for UTXO assets, uh, which we will be releasing alongside the Talon wallet as well. So, yeah, I think um, the marketplace is going to be a big thing because, um, because you will literally be able to create your asset. It doesn't matter what the supply would be and the market would literally be an instant uh, exchange for your asset a lot like um a lot like what magic eden would be or open c but 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 solely for utxo based chains so you'll be able to transact baguettes mr fabrice but um, coin. yeah <laughs> <laughs> the fringe bakery I mean, coin. that's one way of getting around it another very good and positive way of getting around it is uh, if we're moving into hardware wallets I've been very impressed with what I've seen from Keystone. They have some amazing stuff on the way out where they're essentially air gapping the wallet. They're using a camera function on the wallet to air gap themselves. The wallet itself uh, from, the, uh, from the PC, instead of plugging it in like you do with certain other devices. So it, it's to me, that looks like another very positive step forward you can completely sidestep having anything in your browser as long as the browser app is willing to spit out a nice qr code for you to scan there's no hooking into metamask or anything like that to sign it you can plug it into your phone and sign broadcast from a completely separate device at the same time keeping full network segregation and things like that that is something i've been very excited to see 
And who knows, we might be able to get Talon Wallet to work with that at some point in the future. I will have to see. Yeah. David, um, as we've seen on um, EVM chains, uh, the exploits that are out there in Solidity and things like that, and we're talking about Raptorium uh, utilizing Java and Python for contracting. And as far as um, a lot of people know, there are many ways to exploit those languages as well. So how are, are you going to deploy uh, that side of the chain uh, in the contracting uh, in a safe manner? Uh, I mean, we've got several uh, phased approaches to that. There uh, are some very useful tools called Vera Code at the moment that you can use for exploring your Java. And I believe they've also just added Python support. Apart from that, we've also got um, a partnership, not yet fully announced, but with uh, Yeti Audit, which will disassemble smart contracts, analyze them fully. We'll also, it will, um, they, they've got a custom AI solution, so we can very quickly get anything bad on chain flagged and brought to the attention of the right people for example um, one of the common exploits we've seen um, here at the end of 2023 has been metadata based so uh, overflows hidden in metadata uh, overflows underflows similar attacks hidden on attached ipfs data for tokens and assets, all of this um, should be taken apart and analyzed by this dedicated AI. Is it going to be 100% infallible? Of course not. But is it going to mitigate a very large amount of what's going on? Yeah, definitely. So we're already working on solutions to the problems before we know the exact problems uh david what what is your first token going to be released on chain are we going to have the piggy piggy token well that's a good question <laughs> and, and if we are then what what's the piggy token going to do I, I know you've talked you've talked about only raptors before well yeah that does seem like a good idea it, it might not be the best idea to admit to out here in public <laughs> uh, particularly well, there's a, there's given only... local laws in the country where I'm operating, but uh, that could very well be in the works. Okay, there we there we go, guys. Only Raptors is coming. One of the uh, one of the big things on EVM chains has been uh, non fungible tokens, where you've uh, you know you've got a token connected to a it's either a JPEG or a GIF or some file or something like that on a UTXO based chain. How do does that data connect to the token? Would you be able to tell people how that's going to work? In exactly the same way as on an EVM-based chain, it's going to be an attachment in the metadata that the wallet can then use to pull that data from IPFS in, or, or similar systems, Arweave, Filecoin, what are the others? There, there are quite a few other storage solutions. We use the same model. Uh, and also the, the way oh, that sorry. The... the the one thing about it though is rather than on an EVM based chain where it's written into a contract that's then published to the chain, here that data is written into the chain itself during the creation of the asset. And would you be able to tell the listeners uh, the different ways of asset deployment, whether you can change the information or whether you can, you know, create an asset that can't be changed. What are the different ways of creating an asset? If we're talking about exclusively for our upcoming asset launch, we've got multiple classes of assets. We've got fully unique ones. We've got sub assets where you have to own a main asset. And then let's say, for example, Mr. Altcoin Cash, who happens to be in the space, um, let's say he wants to add to his rather extensive portfolio of altcoins. He's already got malt and alt. Let's say he wants to add an intellectual coin, 
for his new brand of nootropics. <laughs> so um, altcoin cash and then gestalt, alt and be a sub asset um, uh, along with NFTs, NFTs where you can transfer the ownership, NFTs that, uh, sorry, others that are completely immutable. Um, basically where the the uniqueness comes from the moment of creation, not just from who's owning it at the moment. It's a myriad of different ways and our implementation. Implementations like, for example, the one on Ergo use their version language to create your token with the data in it would follow the conventions laid out in that contract can be done in many different ways a uh, couple of years now um, we've seen a lot of different blockchain projects are interoperable with other blockchain networks how can utxo projects uh, do this so how can they um, embrace inter interoperability with other blockchain networks how we can embrace it open up as many bridges as possible re reach out and partner with other projects it really that's what it's all about exploit points over the last few years has been the bridge areas how can how can we deploy bridges that are um, safer than what has already been deployed out there that's not necessarily overly difficult i mean a lot of the bridge exploits have been from for example here ledger connect problems with Ledger Connect, there were problems with all of KyberSwap's infrastructure. There have been instances of direct, almost malfeasance by a lot of these bridge operators, which is something a lot of people don't want to talk about, but it's nonetheless true, where they've basically ignored basic server-side security because they think, oh, my contract handles all of that. But, I mean, if you can gain access to the server, you can change what contract it's running. So it's extremely cringe in many cases. In other cases, it, it's a shocking lack of updates or rolling out automated updates without checking that they're good. Things that um, people have commented on in the, in the past is um, the bridge that we've currently got right now for uh, Rapt Raptorium. It's not the quickest to, to use between the between the two chains. Are there any improvements that can be made in terms of speeding up that process? Well, yes, there are. But then we start putting user funds at risk. And I'm not sure if that's a path we're going to go down. What we have now is a centralized, semi-automated bridge actually automated bridge but it, it works well enough it is inconvenient to have to sign twice but safest implement we've been able to think up until i see something demonstrably better then it's what we're going to be sticking with um who uh do you think in the space would be really worthwhile to collaborate with to to further development in uh the UTXO DeFi space, who's really pushing boundaries at the moment that you can think of? That would... Ah, Ruben, you've just left us. He would be one of them. Um, yeah. Ruben would yeah. definitely be one of them. Firo Project, they've got really good stuff. Zano, the Zano Project, technically, they're, they're somewhere in between UTXO and account-based because they're crypto note, but still very nice project. Beam are another very good possibility. They have an interesting marketplace with private assets, which is slowly starting to get more traction. And there is overall quite a bit of stuff coming along. Um, I think uh, Fabrice is saying that he's uh, he's got another space he's got to get to. Fabrice? Yes, totally. At, uh, in uh, 20 minutes, so I need to prepare for. And uh, yeah, it's also much is all we've been talking about people and you hanging out, hanging out here to just talk about with us so yeah <laughs> yeah thanks for your contribution brother it's been nice to have you on here yeah pleasure um guys uh we would like to know what you want to build on the chain uh when we are 
live with assets. It doesn't matter how great or how stupid the idea might be. We just want to know uh, what, what you are looking to build and what you're interested in. Uh, so if you want to just quickly tell us, uh, raise your hand and uh, we'll be more than keen to hear about it. Anyone? Hey, uh, next question is, uh, why do you think that um, organization uh, on UTXO chains hasn't really taken off yet? Uh, David? I think a big part of that is down to how Ravencoin essentially flopped. They focused on developing marketplaces rather than use cases and uses for own technology. It's yoo-hoo. We've got a train, but no rails. Train with no rails isn't going to go anywhere. Yeah. Uh, that I think that put a lot of people off of the concept, but um, could be wrong on that count. We'll have to see how it all goes. Guys, for those of you in the space, before I get my voice worn out, I need to make another cup of coffee. So if you could please take a minute to tweet out the space, let anybody you can think of know about it, and or anybody with who might be interested in it know about it. Please don't spam anybody. Yeah. <laughs> Death to all spammers. Sherm's here. Sherm, you should uh, come and tell us about the um, the Discord and uh, what people are, have been building on the on the test net in terms of assets. Page you as a speaker if you want to say a few words, Sherm. Okay, let me look who's here. Lots of listeners. It's been absolutely fantastic. The amount of people, almost four hundred at the moment. On Flockpool, if you want to say a few words, feel free. Raise your hand. I mean, Delgon is actually one of the pioneers in the whole space. I happen to know that they are currently working on Stratum V2, on implementing that for RTM. And that really is no small thing. Currently, there are only two BTC pools offering it. So if Flockpool can come along and offer it for CPU and potentially later GPU-based coins, it is going to be a game changer. Let me know. Is. How you doing? How you Sherm? doing? Very good. Uh, if you don't know who Sherm is, guys, he's the um, head of moderation at the Discord. He generally is the all-seeing eye of the Raptorian project, and uh, and is the bridge between the community and the and the team. Nice to have you with us. Thank you. Um, yeah, regarding your question, yeah, regarding uh, testnet and assets. I mean, you got people developing a lot of games. Obviously, they're going to be using tokens and stuff. With that, like Ghost Rider Valley, he's got his uh, game up on uh, Google Play, and you can start testing that out. And uh, I mean, I, I've seen a lot of people talking about utilizing uh, different assets for different implementations. But they kind of kept them under wraps because they don't want to get the, uh, the word out too much on what they're doing. But I've seen a lot of activity and a lot of people setting up wallets and getting the testnet up and running. And if anybody needs help, Getting set up on testnet, obviously hop into the Discord. We can get you set up on the testnet wallet and plenty of testnet tokens I can send out to you to where you can start testing out assets and start working on your implementations. And you know, there's a lot of ideas. Everybody wants to create the, their tokens and obviously the only fans and games and different things like that that are being developed currently. But I mean, it's very definitely a very exciting time with, with assets eminent. So, what uh, what tokens are you going to create, Sherm? I mean, obviously, Sherm token is going to come into play. <laughs> I haven't quite uh, figured out its use case yet, but it'll definitely be out there. Also, I know, uh, you know Rabbit Mining has talked about developing a token on, on chain. I don't know what it is. And what's uh, what's the use going to be? I mean, I think it's going to be something, you know, obviously community-based. Yeah. So things you can give out to his members and things like that. And I've seen a lot of activity of you know, people on his Discord, you know, wanting a rabbit token, you know, whether it be for fun and things like that, or what he can do to utilize it. Community. And uh, what tokens have people created already on the on the testnet that you uh, that are quite notable? I mean, obviously, one of the ones I created, obviously, 
USDT, you know, obviously you have a lot of the uh, main projects <laughs> that are already kind of out there, obviously for fun. But, uh, I mean, any name that you can think of, you can thought of, I mean, you got baguette token, you got hot dog token, you got, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we created a lot of uh, fun names, but obviously we don't want to give out all those names either just yet, because obviously people want to develop these projects, you don't want to race... Uh, and someone try to steal their uh, token names. I think people are going to still steal names anyway. There's nothing stopping people from doing any of that. No, either. definitely not. But It'll be the first to uh, to have the name. I suppose that's a that's a. Yeah, I mean, point. obviously, you can alter the name slightly and have your own uh, version of it pretty easily. Yeah, and uh, the community. Can you can you tell us about the community and what what uh, aspects are good and uh, what's going on? With that, I mean, Discord is the place to be. I mean, obviously, obviously, we have a lot of these social medias out there. Obviously, Twitter and Telegram and X and, and all these places. But the Discord is where everybody hangs out. Um, obviously, we do trivia nights every Monday and Thursday night, and that's where the, the community really com comes out to gather around uh, your very rigged and salty trivia nights. And obviously, we have a lot of fun and. Great way to get Reptorium. We obviously, we wash all that salt away at the end with a nice rainstorm of Reptorium, which is always nice. Things where you can obviously level up with trivia, where you can get knighted. So if you donate to the rain pot for trivia, you can get leveled up and get knighted. So once you get every trivia, you can level up one level. And once you reach level 11, you get a Gigatoshi status which gives you access to, you know, secret channel and access to early access to things that we're doing on chain. So it'll be early access to test net features and things like that. And other projects that we're doing and testing. And also, you obviously get some more extra rain. It gives you also access to things like that. One of the community members, Wiz, has developed. He's developed a stable diffusion bot access to, which is thing it makes stable diffusion very easy to use and you get you don't have to uh, pay to utilize it and generate a lot of art. And obviously you can utilize that to make NFTs. And I know some people are making stickers and things like that, that they can sell and or utilize to make art for thumbnails for YouTube or whatever projects and stuff you're working on. So that's been a great addition to Discord. But I mean, it's just a great community, a lot of support any questions and issues I mean, that's the place to go awesome stuff and uh a couple more a couple of extra things added to the community over the last uh couple of months one of them uh, is is called raptorus uh, would you be able to explain to people what that is yeah raptorus is a, a uh a bot that dramardis has made it um feature that kind of summarizes the stuff on the explorer which we created an explorer channel so you can kind of see everything that's going on on the chain with you know, supply on exchanges, the, the block heights, and you know all the basic explorer information presented in a uh, very visual, really nice way. Um, there's also you can also add your wallet addresses, so you can get notifications when you have Reptorium hit certain addresses. He's also incorporated a uh, a way to kind of track your your smart node. Uh, status so if you, you can incorporate your uh add your smart note address and you can see if you also get a posi score or if your node gets banned you'll get an alert so that's a great feature as well another feature i think he added is you know rain warnings so someone can send out a rain warning if there's gonna be a lot of rain in the discord and people that enable that will get an alert on their discord saying uh you know a storm is imminent <laughs> i don't know what rain is can you explain what Oh, rain sure. Is. Yeah. Rain is basically Raptorium that, you know, community members are raining out to the community. So you can send Raptorium to in, in different ways. So you can send it to active users. So you can say, I want to send 10 Raptorium to 10 different users and it'll pull up the active users in Discord within the last hour and rain it out to them. You can do different ones where there's interactive. So you do an interactive rain and you have to click the right emoji on the message to get to get rain or phrase rain 
reinvent the, the correct phrase in the message in the rain to get rain or capture rain. You have to enter the captcha into the thread and get Raptorian that way as well. One of the big things in the Raptorian community at the moment is um, is RCC, and that's what people earn from uh, chatting on the server. <coughs> now, um, Goli, the guy that created it, has been talking about implementing that into assets when assets is released oh, yes. the uh things i've been wondering is is he going to reset the chain when that happens or is he going to keep the balances that everyone has got for when assets is released i know he's uh kind of going back and forth on whether or not uh he may have to reset the chain or not depending on the implementation obviously that hasn't been decided yet i kind of see how uh that plays out but obviously i think it's going to be one of the first tokens on chain and basically Raptor Chat coins to go a little more detail what that is. Essentially it's a bot that kind of mimics Raptorium chain. Uh, you can rain it out just like Raptorium and you basically earn it from chatting in the Discord. So you can chat, you might see a little icon underneath your message and that means you hit a RCC block. The reward is basically kind of the same as Raptorium and you can set up RCC nodes and send that RCC to RCC nodes and earn the quote unquote node reward when a block is hit. He created uh, like shared node pools and mining pools. So it kind of works similar to how blockchain works. You know, you can join a mining pool and people that are chatting inactive and somebody hits a block, that reward gets distributed to how many shares or slash posts those people in your pool had done during that time. And also with RCC shared nodes, you can send your RCC to the RCC node providers and fill up those nodes quicker because obviously you need a certain collateral amount for that node to be active. And it kind of runs in the same schedule as RTM according to block height. So there's collateral increases just like RTM. So what is the, um, sorry, Sean, we've, it's just cut off Twitter being Twitter again. So what is the um, current collateral amount for an RCC node right now in the, in the discord i think uh, we've lost like... Sherm. yeah we've lost Sherm. okay uh for those that um are not already at our uh discord community you can uh, join by heading over to discord.gg forward slash raptorium uh and then uh yeah and we'll be more than pleased to uh welcome you to the community and help you out uh with fitting in and uh, how everything works. Be nice to see you. Looks like Sherm's connecting. Um, what educational uh, resources would you recommend uh, for those that are trying to understand uh, UTXO DeFi? Ooh, that's... <laughs> Because I mean, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of resources for solidity, but because UTXO DeFi is really something that, even though it's old, it hasn't really been utilized on a large scale as of yet. Um, so there might there may be few educational resources out there, but what would you recommend that people go check out? It's like uh, Twitter's been Twitter again. Always happens on Twitter Spaces. If you're just joining us uh, and you want to and you want to be part of the conversation, uh, just raise your hand, and uh, we'd be more than happy to have your insights on what you would like to create on the chain uh, at Raptorium or any other UTXO DeFi project. For that matter, we've already heard a few uh, wacky ideas, which has been very nice. Uh, we've heard from Sherm and how. Assets are going to complement the the Raptorium Discord with uh, with RCC and um, other ways of generating community um, activity using using assets. We've also heard from uh, Fabrice how he's talking about traceability and produce and uh, and also he he's possibly going to be releasing a, a, a baguette coin. <laughs> Yeah, the guy is French. Um, we do have Charlie here as well, who um, is actually working on a, a game at the moment. Um, has a has a team uh, working on a game called Winterborn, and um, 
that is quite notable uh, because Winterbourne is, is is a game that's um, it's built in Unreal Engine uh, five, and also oh we've got some requests for speaking. Yeah, it's built in Unreal en Engine five, and it utilizes um, assets, uh, but just not not your regular assets. It's um, it's assets that are created from real world items. Now, what by that by what I mean uh, with that is um, on the on the Raptorium team right now we have a resident metalsmith, and uh, his name is Jesse Lambert, and he's known as the Crypto Smith. Now, every single week, uh, Jesse will create um, something from. It could be anything, but uh, it's mainly um, Damascus steel or, uh, or or different alloys like that. And he'll create like axes or knives or anything like that. And um, a while ago now, we um, we uh, collectively collectively purchased a laser scanning machine. Um, so when jesse creates these items um they get put into a laser scanner and a digital representation of the items is then created uh in full uh, four dimensions uh which means that when that is connected to uh the asset uh for when the assets main that is live then uh the, the game that Charlie's working on, which is called Winterborn, can then connect to um, a wallet, which is holding the asset with the, with the, obviously with the knife or the axe or whatever item it is for the game within it. Uh, so then that item is then able to be uh, populated into the game. Uh, and then also that item is then easily tradable in a decentralized in a decentralized area as well such as uh, maybe the new marketplace that's been released or any other or any other area that can transact uh, raptorium assets which means that as soon as that wallet um, loses that asset then you would literally lose the asset within the game because the game would be then um, not read the wallet uh, with the asset in it uh, so this is pretty exciting. Uh, what's going on with that is um, is for each of the items that's being created, there are a uh, hundred um, NFTs that are connected to it. The first NFT is um, is the real item, um, which you can own yourself and hold and and whatever, but the real item has got NFT number one and that has the highest perks in the game because you because you own the high the, you know the, the actual item then you'll have uh nft 2 to 100 which are exactly the same item in different colors and things like that with slightly lower perks but still uh still you know a notable item to hold in the game uh, and these items are then able to be transactable and swappable um amongst users and will hold a value on the upcoming marketplaces now, if charlie would be able to connect with us he'd be able to tell us more about the development of the game and how he's coming on with that which would be which would be great charlie are you here looks like uh we've got someone else has requested hello akutama tada how are you akutama tada Am I saying that correctly? What asset would you like to create on chain, Akutamatada? Sorry, looks like I was off there. No problem. Okay. No, um, it's not so much. It's more about, I think it's really neat with the 3D laser scanning of items. Yep. Okay. Um, I guess my question is, and I guess I don't understand maybe too much about NFTs other than during the last... Uh, bull cycle there was a lot of jpeg nfts but this this looks pretty cool that it's actually something physical that's scanned now with ai i'm noticing a lot of ai 
programs out there that would go out to the internet and scrape uh, basically copyrighted material. If someone were to create real um, assets in real life and 3D scan them, what stops that theft from happening? Because it is a bit of intellectual property happening there, right? Well, um, I think um, AI can scrape whatever it wants to scrape, yeah? And there's nothing stopping AI from doing that. But what really matters is whether that item is the real deal or not. And that's where blockchain comes into it because AI can scrape it, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be um, allowable to be used within the game because the game's only going to be detecting a certain string of assets that's going to be um, uh, utilized into the games. Now, um, you know that you're holding the genuine article uh, by by the run of assets that you're holding because they have the unique id now uh, you know ai anyone can like screen grab an asset or or whatever whether it's ai or a real person that's besides the point the the main like i was saying earlier the main uh, the main vector in all of this is whether it's the real deal or not and this is where blockchain comes into it uh, because blockchain is immutable and uh, cannot be cloned Okay, that, that's cool. And, and um, when it comes to the game, yeah, what what is the um, the goal with the game? What are we what is what are we trying to accomplish by launching a game on Raptorium? I don't know if it's I guess it's a standalone game. How does Raptorium play in it? What is it trying to show and reflect that draws people to the Raptorium community? I'm just trying to wrap my head around. A game because there's other projects that are into the gaming space. So I'm like, okay, is this it, it, it's a gaming space. It's or? more of a community effort in this case. It, it kind of happened because a large number of people from the community were interested in making it happen. We decided that we would like to support this and kind of incubate and nurture it a bit. It is a great way to showcase. A whole bunch of stuff. One of the reasons why it's so popular in um, in the EVM blockchain space, they talk about GameFi. GameFi is the holy grail for a lot of blockchains because uh, of the sheer volume of transactions you get on chain from it that are all linked to real actual humans and if you were vc driven it's one of the key metrics uh, you can use with venture capital in order to pump up available capital and we'd like to show that basically yeah it's doable yep we can get the transactions but it doesn't have to be necessarily venture capital driven other projects would be just more like engagement farming when they're trying to work the game five space that would that, that right? would be 90 odd percent of the game five space yeah so a lot of other projects what differentiates raptorian is that they're just far they're farming engagement but there is no real utility beneath it they're hoping to create utility out of it if there's a market that that's what you're looking at uh, on some of the EVM chains. There are some of the other uh, sort of game five, but not really in the same semi scammy manner. Game five projects. Um, we we've got some friends over on the Neoxa project. They they are looking at doing things completely differently, um, where they're looking at utilizing blockchain for permissionless problem free basically marketplace for for items skins all that kind of stuff all that kind of good stuff for games without going into the whole sort of transaction farming aspect of it there, there are lots of good projects out there as well but they don't receive quite the same amount of recognition because they don't have the same amount of throughput. Uh, many of the larger GameFi projects were airdrop driven, meaning it cost nothing for people to get into them. 
like to get to the same number of transactions as some of these projects without having to basically raise a lot of capital for it. And we're going about showing that a community can get together and build. It's a long process. And for some people who think that it's project driven, it can lead to misunderstandings where they think that, hey, the project has a development fee. Why is that not going in there? And why is it not making much more rapid progress? It's not. It's a community effort, actual community effort, not uh, something that's making the claim to be a community effort. I I hope that sort of explains the, the whole situation rather clearly i think i think the main thing to to point out is um you know raptorium is a is is a broad landscape it's it's a large ecosystem with many possibilities and there's a lot going on in all different aspects of the of the chain a lot of different development projects uh, going on right now um and one of the main important things is to set the example and show what can be done uh for then other people to then you know, want to build um, other things on the chain. And uh, that's that's why we're developing the games. You see these other projects on EVM chains, that's the soul of the only thing that they do. And that's what the only thing that their chain is, um, well, their token is built for is just for that game. You know, our chain is built for many, many things. And um, it's important for us to really, like I said before, set the example uh, for other projects to build on the chain and to see the potential uh, of what you can do uh, with UTXO DeFi. Yeah, it seems to me that um, it's growing organically instead of forced, like how Big Biggie was mentioning, like the airdrops. A lot of that, it's just kind of like forced adoption, not necessarily organically created. Well, it's, it's based on greed, isn't it? People, you're forcing the airdrops on the people because the people are greedy and they just want the, they want to make money, yeah? Uh, and then there's the other aspects of blockchain where people actually really want to build something worthwhile and substantial. And before all of these um, other chains were forcing airdrops on all these people, the master chain, uh, the, the people that were building on the master chain were not necessarily building for greed. So I think what, what will eventually happen with a, a more established UTXO-based chain uh, with tokens is, uh, is you will start to see those sort of segregated scenarios in, in games where people will start forcing things down. But at the stage of where we are at as a chain and, and, and development-wise, we are literally uh, not not here for 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 making money we're here for building and really setting an example of what can be possible uh in 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 a utxo sort of environment charlie's here now charlie how you doing yeah pretty good can you uh can you hear me okay perfectly fine um what i'd like to hear from you is um what you're working on and what are you excited about uh right now i'm working on of course rtm uh the documents um the ipfs cluster for the uh, assets because we're planning to have an easy uh, way to attach, um, you know, image or video or whatnot to um, assets in the wallet and just upload directly to the IPFS cluster. Working on that, again, part of just making everything wrapped up and nice and easy to use. You don't want to have to go surfing through uh, IPFS gateways or installing on your own computer, whatever, just to attach, you know. Uh, what you need to to the assets, so I should be able to do that directly through the wallet. Uh, and then also working on Winterborn, that's been going for well, close to a year. It's recently picked up quite a bit of steam. What that is is an MMORPG fantasy style. Uh, started calling it an MMO Big, uh, which is massive multiplayer online blockchain integrated game. I don't know if that's a thing, but it sounds cool. So, uh, (laughs) uh, yeah, it's going to be kind of a traditional fantasy, but obviously with uh, we have a couple of extra races, primes, which are kind of a bit of a throw a technological twist into it. And then we'll have raptors, of course, because you just have to. Uh, It's a big world, really big, visual, beautiful world. And a couple of reasons why 
that kind of started is it's a way to kind of demonstrate what RTM can do in a game like this. Obviously, uh, a big game, complex game like uh, MMORPG, it's uh, pretty big and complex. So the integration can do a lot, but not only showcase what it can do, how it can be used, but also kind of as a highly visual uh, kind of educational environment to teach people about uh, blockchain. I mean, you're in game, you're in a fun visual environment. And then you're able to interact with the Raptorium blockchain in that environment, let's say in being able to tokenize an item directly in your inventory, for example, and then interact with the information on the blockchain and uh, access blockchain information. Um, you know, it's it's really fun uh, way to learn about it and how it all works. And then of course, there's, there's a ton of benefits of you know, a Raptorium integration, um, just about anything you can think of in game can be tokenized. And because of the way Raptorium is doing assets uh, with the, the naming, the unique naming, it's also a very quick visual way to trace an item and an NFT easily. You can tokenize uh, a character and uh, track its evolution. I'm not going to say too much about this because I don't want to kind of let everybody in on everything that we're planning to do. But, <laughs> you know, a lot of things can be tokenized. Um, weapons can be tokenized. And then, you know, it has the master asset. And then as it progresses through games, it can have different sub assets created on its master asset. And that kind of tracks the item on the blockchain through its progression through the game. You know, everything's decentralized, everything is there, verifiable on the blockchain, which also opens up doors to easily transferring these items or characters or what the uh, DAOs, you know, they can be assigned a yeah. NFT and then sub NFT based on their level and what they've done. And that opens up other benefits in game. And again, you're not relying on the game server database for this information where let's say a crooked server owner could uh, mess with it or whatever, you know, you're not relying on you're not trusting anybody, all this stuff's on blockchain. So uh, right now in development, we're just developing the world. It's a big, big world. It's a lot of work, uh, all the terrain and uh, lighting, all that stuff, it's all from scratch. Uh, I shared some uh, screenshots of it not too long ago. So that will be until uh, the MMORPG part of it is released by uh, a company called Activism. We're going to use them to do a lot of the heavy lifting uh, on the MMORPG side of it, especially the in-game networking. Uh, it saves a massive amount of work. They've done a really good job with it. Um, so for now, it's mainly the world build, the lore, the world map. Uh, we're developing the skills, the races, uh, the, the stats, um, quests, items it's obviously a huge amount of work so i mean if there's anybody out there that is interested in what we're doing and they want to hop on and uh, work with a you know a kind of a the community on it i welcome that feel free to hit me up yeah it's about uh, all i have to say about winterborn at the moment it's it's a it's a fun project though really a lot of fun you're saying that i can uh i can buy one of crypto smith swords then i can um then I can upgrade my handle. Then I could add, I could I could add a leather ribbon on the handle or something like that. Then I could change the alloy of the steel, uh, all by token upgrades. Well, yeah, you could do really whatever you want as long as it follows the look of the original blade, because you don't want to deviate that too much, because then the the blade no longer matches the real blade. But like upgrading, uh, adding different things to it. Uh, such as certain abilities or skills. Uh, obviously, the only person that can have that in game is somebody who's verified on the blockchain by the, the game server as the owner. And that's going to give, uh, I don't know what we can do there, maybe a special glow or special status to say that they have this real item from CryptoSmith. It's verified. And uh, yeah, but. OK, so how how will the game uh, verify that the person that's holding the asset is 
the the owner because they literally have an address with the assets in there can't they just put any old address on there or is there a way that the, the game will track exactly that they they own the asset and they have it right now yeah we're, we're still trying to figure out the best way to do that because uh, it's kind of a a mix of uh i mean one way is to include a wallet in the game client itself uh and then the server can talk with the game client and verify that they have you know that they do own that address that the asset is there another one is to have actually the game server create you know each player or each account an address and that's where it's held uh we're, we're still had not completely solid on how we want to handle that but it's a couple of different ways it can be done okay and um as you're here you know building a game and um setting an example uh for for how uh, people can use uh, utxo DeFi uh in a broader ecosystem what do you think the potential is for for this type of technology that really hasn't been um, tapped into too much over the last 10 years what is the potential of utxo DeFi? what 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 things do you what exciting things do you think could be could be gained from it you know, a lot, lot of things could happen. As Fabrice mentioned earlier, different types of gambling, market-based games. We could see people setting up relatively quickly and easily. Things like um, options platforms and roulette games on the on the different crypto markets. There are lots of options to go around. And it's very simple to make it all 100% verifiable, transparency being king. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we are coming up to the two hour mark now on our spaces. And um, I think uh, we're going to start rolling up very shortly. Uh, I think uh, what I'll do is I'll do some final, I'll do some final mm. words. Uh, just want to say a big thank you to everyone for joining us on this uh, exploration of use cases in UTXO DeFi. Um, it's uh, been an enlightening and engaging discussion uh, filled with insights, uh, perspectives, and uh, it's nice to sh see a shared passion for the potential uh, that UTXO models bring to the decentralized finance space. Also nice, nice to see uh, Ruben on here as well and, and, uh, and, and many other people. Um, again, a big shout out to our incredible speakers who've shared their knowledge and experiences. It adds immense value to the understanding of UTXO DeFi and uh, and the deployment of Raptorium assets. And also uh, our wonderful participants, thank you uh, for your questions, Rapid Mining, uh, DJ Mines. Big shout out to Hunter Schultz as well, also known as HNS for everything he, he works on. Shout out to Delgon. Thanks for popping along, and uh, also Alejandro, Sherm, Pepe. Thanks, thanks for stopping along. Uh, one thing uh, to mention is the dialogue does not end here. Um, we do encourage you to continue these discussions on uh, Twitter, also known as X, and also other social platforms. Um, please use the the hashtag UTXO DeFi Spaces. That is UTXO. DeFi spaces, then we'll be able to uh, pick up the conversation. Um, so feel free to share your takeaways, uh, connect with fellow enthusiasts and uh, keep the momentum going. Uh, the more we share, uh, the more we learn. Um, as we uh, wrap this up, I encourage each one of you to stay curious about the developments in the UTXO DeFi space and keep up to date with uh, the developments on uh, Raptorium assets as well. Uh, follow the projects uh, that have been discussed today, including Fero and Flockpool and, uh, and 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 the others as well, and and the and the Winterborn project, and also the Talon Wallet project and Arthera as well. Uh, check those out, um, and also stay informed about the latest innovations shaping the future of decentralized finance. We are 
committed to do this again to bring you more enlightening discussions in the future we're, we're thinking of doing this um every couple of weeks um so if you have any specific specific topics or themes you'd like to us to cover in an upcoming x spaces feel free to sh share your suggestions in the comment box below this space or directly to us either at the discord or uh, or in the in the direct message on on twitter as well um this space uh, is you know for you all it's for the community and we really value your input on what you would like to hear and see uh, so before we officially conclude, I'd just like to say a heartfelt thank you to each and every one of you for being part of uh, the UTXO DeFi spaces. Your presence, uh, questions and enthusiasm um, have made this event special. I didn't think we were going to get over 600 viewers, <laughs> but that was pretty amazing, actually. This is literally our first space, so to get that many people listening to us is, uh, is, is, is a success. So, uh, yeah, thank you all for listening. And uh, feels pretty good, it does, it does, it feels good. And uh, I'll look forward to doing the next one. Um, as we sign off today, uh, just remember that the world of UTXO, UTXO DeFi, even though it's old, it's still fairly new. Um, and we are really pushing the boundaries and building on that. And it and and it's filled with opportunities for innovation so any of you developers or, or builders that really want to get to grips with um how things can can evolve in a utxo DeFi environment please join our discord and follow um, the raptoria project or the fero project or or even the ergo project um because these are the sort of projects that are really pushing the boundaries and and, and making brand new things happen in the blockchain space and you know we can shape the future of decentralized finance together we're not project specific we we invite all projects to get involved um so is there any final words you would like to say to everybody uh david no nah, not in particular uh thanks for coming it was great having you here uh please do feel free to participate a bit more actively next time it's an open space so we can keep evolving We'd like to move beyond just listening to ourselves. We always appreciate good, <laughs> positive input from you guys, and with as many of, with as many people in the space as we've had tonight, uh, there should be plenty of you out there with something to say. Do feel free to hop on and uh, let us know about it. And on that note, until next time, stay inspired, stay connected. And let's keep exploring the limitless possibilities of UTXO DeFi. Cheers, guys. Thank you.